Welcome to worship with the Saints of St. Luke's. We're glad you're here. We're glad uh, everyone who is with us online is here. Um, some are watching right now on Sunday morning and some will be watching later. For those of you in the building, um, when we're inside the altar rail and speaking, we'll take our masks off, but otherwise we will leave our masks on. Uh, at, at the peace, you stay right where you are and, and wave to folks. Uh, at communion, we are doing communion in one kind. So I will bring the bread to you where you are in your seats and you just keep holding it. When I return here, uh, I, I will invite us all to eat together. I think those are the things that we need to know. Um, does everybody have access to a bulletin? Looks like they do. Right. Let us begin. Blessed be God, holy, glorious, and undivided Trinity. And blessed be God's name, and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all our spirit, all the sight and from you the Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, because without you we are not able to please you, mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from Proverbs. Wisdom cries out in the street. In the square, she raises her voice. At the busiest corner, she cries out. At the entrance of the city gates, she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts on you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called you, called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no one needed. And because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you, when panic strikes you like a storm, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind. When distress and anguish come upon you, then they will fall upon me but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me. Because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would have none of my counsel, and despise all my reproof. Therefore, they shall eat the fruit of their way, and be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's read Psalm one, Psalm nineteen in unison. The heavens declare the glory of God. And the firmament shows her handiwork. One day it tells its tale to another, and one night it tells knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sounds are loud to all winds, and their message to the ends of the world. In the deep you have set up a little in the sun. 
It comes forward like a bridegroom on its chair. It rejoices like a chariot on its horse. It goes forth from the arrows to the edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. Your law, O God, is perfect and revives the soul. Your testimony is sure and gives wisdom to the innocent. Your statutes are just and rejoice the heart. Your commandment is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the earth is clean and endures forever. Your judgments are true and righteous altogether. More to the desire of the world may be called, more than much refined gold. Sweeter far than honey, more than honey than honey. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. Who can tell how often one offends? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get to an end with me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of the great words. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, strength and unto me. A reading from James. Not many of you should become teachers, my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the whole body in check with a bridle. If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at ships, though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them. Yet they are guided by a very small rudder, wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by God. For every species of beast and bird, reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and have been tamed by the human species. But no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not to be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah and still others one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, you are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about it. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders the chief priests and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, 
And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. I speak to you in the name of the one holy and living God. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Sally French, and I am the regional canon for this part of our diocese. I'm here today with Canon David Sellery, the canon for Congregational Mission. Uh, and on behalf of our bishops, we bring you their greetings. Canon Sellery and I work to support our congregations and worshiping communities. He leads the team for congregational support in our diocese, of which I and the other regional canons and missionaries are a part. And we are glad to be able to be with you today as we say goodbye to your rector and begin a new season in the life of St. Luke's. I know that today is not an easy day. It's not what most people thought would be happening here on the second Sunday in September. And saying goodbye is a hard thing to do under any circumstances. If you add to that the 20th anniversary of the destruction of the World Trade Center in New York and a global pandemic that seems to be getting worse every day, well, it's all rather a lot now. And yet we're here this morning to celebrate. We celebrate Rector Helen's seven years of ministry in this congregation and in the wider Durham community. We celebrate connections and friendships, not just with Rector Helen and her family, but within this parish, between individuals and groups and ministries. And we celebrate the many ways that God's work has been done and will continue to be done here. The mission and ministry you have shared and the ways that the things you have all done together have enhanced the world around. It seems a little strange that we're holding together both loss and celebration, doesn't it? that we are gathered to say farewell and thank you to Rector Helen and her family in the middle of a difficult anniversary in our nation and a pandemic in our world. And yet the way forward for both celebration and loss is the same. It is Jesus Christ our Lord. Our gospel this morning from Mark chapter 8 is the passage known as the Confession of it's a simple story, and there are versions of it in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. In the villages of Caesarea Philippi, Jesus asks the disciples, Who do people say that I am? That answer is easy enough. Some say John the Baptist, or possibly Elijah, or one of the prophets. The next question, however, is much harder. Who do you say that I am? 
Peter's response is just four words. You are the Messiah. But it is an astonishing answer for several reasons. First, everyone knew the tradition of the Jewish Messiah. The Messiah would come as a mighty warrior king, mounted on horseback, with the armies of heaven behind them. They would overthrow Roman rule and restore the kingdom of Israel to the throne of David, and it would be glorious indeed. It would be dramatic and powerful and absolutely amazing. What the Messiah was not was an itinerant rabbi who performed local miracles of healing and feeding with a small band of disciples, fishermen, and farmers and the like following him. The fact that Peter could see and know all this and still recognize Jesus as the Messiah, despite all of his knowledge and expectations and all of the traditions of Israel, is a miracle. Second, place matters. The confession of Peter takes place near Caesarea Philippi, a small town in the northeast corner of what is today the state of Israel. Caesarea Philippi is at the source of the headwaters of the River Jordan, where millions of gallons of pure, fresh water flow out of mountain springs and underground aquifers and become the largest and most important water source in the entire Middle East. Even today, it's an amazing sight, with thunderous rushing waters and cool pools emerging out of the rock of an ancient although the water flow has decreased substantially since late antiquity. A little over 2,000 years ago, the place was called not Caesarea Philippi, who got that name when Jesus was a teenager, but rather Banias or Canias, a sanctuary to the Greek god Pan. And the region was known, as was the entire Galilee, for pagan gods, for the sheer power uncontrolled nature that work in creation. The ancient temples at Banias were carved into the mountainside over the place where the very springs emerged so you could stand in a temple and watch water rush up from under your feet, surrounded by symbols and worship and music and sites of ancient pagan sanctuaries. So when Peter names Jesus as the Messiah, there in the very heart this ancient pagan temple is deliberately choosing Christ above all others. Peter is choosing the hope and promise of God in Jesus above all of the earthly signs of power and prestige, the instant gratification of rushing waters and pagan sanctuaries. Friends, I think this is so important. Peter finally confesses Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah, not as part of a slow and gentle conversion, a logical next step in his profession of faith, but as a deliberate and powerful choice, the opposite of the world's choices and expectations that surround him. Peter confesses Jesus as Messiah, despite all the history of the Jewish people. He confesses Jesus as Messiah without armies, as one who overthrows not with power and force, but with love and compassion. And Peter confesses Jesus as the Christ, the ruler of creation, at the heart of the sanctuaries of the false gods of his day, in those very places where others have been set up to claim power and authority that belongs to God alone. When Peter finally understands, truly understands, who Jesus is, he sees through all the stories and false hopes to, to the true power and the true hope of life in Christ. Now there's one other little detail about that story that I'd like to share. And it comes not from St. Mark's Gospel that we heard this morning, but from Matthew. In Matthew's account of the confession of Peter, there's a little extra detail added 
And that's the part where Jesus responds to Peter's confession by saying, you are Peter, and on this rock I will found my church. Does anyone remember that? It's hugely important in the Roman Catholic tradition as the foundation for the authority of the Pope, who as Bishop of Rome is said to be the successor of St. Peter. For us as Episcopalians, it doesn't have quite that same authority in that way, but the Greek in Matthew's Gospel is fascinating because the word Peter is Petros, and the rock on which the church will be founded is Petra. And that's not just a grammar word difference. You are Petrus, and on Petra I will found my church. Is actually a play on words. Because a Petrus is a small stone, a pebble, a chip, a piece of granite. But Petra is bedrock. Now I'm not going to go too far with this image, both because while it's related to today's gospel, it isn't actually the part of Mark's text, and also because scholars aren't entirely certain how accurate the distinction between bedrock and pebbles might have been in ancient use. But I absolutely love that image, Peter confessing Christ, because if we aren't talking about Peter as the one and only foundation stone, instead we're talking about Peter as gravel, as pebbles, as chips, then there are many stones and pebbles and gravel and chips and rocks. And our faith and when we confess Christ, the church can be built upon each of us. The story of this church, of St. Luke's Durham, is still being written, and each of you has a part to play in what is built next. Director Helen and her family have been some of the rocks that have set the foundation of where you are today, and we celebrate the work that you have done together just as we acknowledge the work that is still to be done, the rocks that each of you offer, and the rocks that are still to come. Some of the mission and ministry you have shared with Director Helen these past seven years will have been wonderful beyond your wildest dreams, and some will have fallen flat. Some things have helped people to know Christ and make him known, and some have not. This is true for every congregation and every rector in every time. But one lesson from today's gospel is that the power of God working in and through us almost never comes in predictable ways. The Messiah works not through armies and power, but in grace, love, and generosity Jesus is found behind the scenes in the work of community and service, not up front in the thundering waters. Here in this place, at St. Luke's Episcopal Church in Durham, North Carolina, you begin a new journey this week as Rector Helen steps away and a season of transition begins. I can't tell you it will always be easy, but it will be holy work. Although there may be much today that feels difficult or incomplete in our world, in each of our lives, in the mission and ministry of this congregation, we give thanks for the work you have done together, and we pray God's blessing and guidance on the tasks ahead. For St. Luke's and for Rector Helen and her family, may you make Christ known in word and deed. May your hearts and lives confess Jesus as the Messiah. And may each of us be rocks in the building up of Christ's church. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand and join in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father of Almighty, maker of all the earth, of all that is seen in us. We believe in one Lord. 
Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal God of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, but one made with the Father, who through all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became a father for joy of him, and his mother of him. For our sake, he was crucified on a righteous body. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated in heaven. On the first day of August 2014, I was inducted by Bishop Michael Curry as Rector of St. Luke's. I have, with God's help and to the best of my abilities, exercised this trust, accepting its privileges and responsibilities. After prayer and careful consideration, it now seems to me that I should lead this charge. I publicly state, my tenure as Active Rector of St. Luke's ends September 15th, 2021. Do you, the people of St. Luke's, recognize and accept the conclusion of this pastoral relationship? It has been our custom when the people leave us they move, they go on to school and such. We give them a prayer shawl. And so this prayer shawl is given to you today to let you know that people at St. Luke's are wrapping you in prayer on your new journey as we know you're wrapping us in prayer as you leave us. I've done my best to be faithful and authentic as your rector for these past seven years. Sometimes it has not been easy, but it has been holy. And I look around the room and I remember so many moments of connection and holiness. I give thanks for the relationships that have been built and it hurts to set those down. But as Philip Bass reminds me, that hurt is a reminder of the love that is there. God has been with you. God is with you. God will be with you. May you know that you have been blessed to be a blessing. Please join. O oh God, you have bound us together for a time as pastor and people, 
to work for the advancement of your kingdom in this place. We give you humble and hearty thanks for the ministry which we have shared these past seven years. We thank you for your patience with us despite our blindness and slowness of our heart. We thank you for your forgiveness and mercy in the face of our many failures. Especially, we thank, thank you, you for your never-failing presence, presence with us through these, through these years, years and, and for the deeper, deeper knowledge of you and, you and of each other which we have we attained. attained. Now we pray. Be, Be with, with those who leave and those who stay. stay. And grant that, that all of us by drawing ever nearer to you, may we always be close, close to each other, other in the communion of your saints. saints. All this we ask for the sake of Jesus, Jesus Christ, our Son, our Son, our Lord. Amen. Spirit of the living God, hear us and change us. Gracious God, we pray for peace, accountability, justice, and reconciliation in this land and throughout the world. We pray for basic human rights for all. We pray for the relief of the oppressed. We give thanks for all that is gracious in the lives of all people on the earth. Spirit of the living God, Amen. We pray for the renewal of the church through deepening faith, love, and service. We pray for Michael and Sam and our bishops, for Helen, our rector, and for the ministry and mission of St. Luke's and her people. We give thanks for the gift of your word, the grace of your sacraments, and the companionship of your people. Spirit of the living God, we pray for our local community. We pray for all people in their daily life and work. We pray that we may see and respond to the needs of those around us. We give thanks for the gifts of beauty, creativity, skill, and compassion which enrich our world and our lives. Spirit of the living God, hear us. We pray for all who are in need, for the sick, the lonely, the poor, for those living with mental illness, addiction, or trauma, for those who are fatigued, and for those who mourn. We pray for those who have died. For the Spirit of the living God, hear us. We invite you to share your prayers aloud now. Pray for healing, healing of body, of mind, of spirit, healing of broken relationships, healing among nations, and healing in this holy place. Spirit of the living God, hear us. We pray for all who bring comfort, care, and healing. We give thanks for human love and friendship, and for all that enriches our daily lives. Spirit of the living God, hear us. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. God of all mercy, 
I confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We deny your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, the evil done in our life. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us for our Savior Jesus Christ. We may abide in your love and certainly in your will. Amen. Now, God, who is both power and love, forgive you and free you from your sins. Heal and strengthen you by the Holy Spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due God's name, bring offering, and come into these courts. I invite you to stand for the great things of him. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to our God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, all holy God, source of life, fountain of mercy. You filled us and all creation with your blessing. And fed us with your constant love. You've redeemed us in Jesus Christ and knit us into one body. Through your spirit you replenish us and call us to fullness of life. Therefore, joining with angels and archangels and with the faithful of every generation, we lift our voices with all creation as we say, Holy, 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 you gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, rejected your love. Yet you never cease to care for us and prepare the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory, giving himself freely to death on the cross he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. 
On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine, and he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Remember his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation, this bread and this wine. By your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior Jesus Christ, and grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into that everlasting heritage of all your children, that with saints past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom be come, come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power of the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. You may be seated as I take the bread out.
invite you to join in the post-communion prayer. Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nurturing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now, send us forth a people forgiven, healed, and renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. And now, know that our God is in your past forgiving you, is in your presence loving you, is in your future meeting you. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with you now and evermore. Amen. Before we conclude, I would like to invite everyone to the reception in Johnson Hall, where we will only be serving water, juice, and soda. Mask most of the time and observing safety that we each need for ourselves. We are St. Luke's Episcopal Church. Church.